Mario brother, and farming our game. We're not like the others who get all the things in your thing. It's in trouble. You can call off. I'm in trouble. We're like the others. You'll be built a new brother. No, you're in for anything. So hang on to your seat. Get ready for remarkable feet. Before actually playing Tamodachi Life, I had no idea what to think. I knew it was a life sim game, a genre that's never been able to hold my interest, and that it seemed absolutely weird and wacky. The other problem was that it starred the Miis, and the avatars have never really done that much for me. It was always cool to see the creativity people had when making them, but they were always just that. Avatars. No personality of their own, just a way to make players feel like they're in the game. But with Tamodachi Life, that all changed. For the first time, I actually cared about the Miis, and at the very least, that's one heck of an accomplishment. Tamodachi Life begins with you creating or importing a Mii of yourself. Soon you're introduced to your own island, which you can name, and it's up to you to populate it. As you do, you'll see the Miis interact and more shops and activities will become available as you play. While this does sound similar to Animal Crossing, it's different in just how much customization can be done. Every single Mii has to be given a full name and a birthday. This will determine their age and exactly what kind of relationship can be forged while on the island. But it goes a step further in that every me also has a voice, one that you can change to match how you think they sound. They can be as throaty or as high-pitched as you want. I was even able to make Andre into an extremely fast talker. Once the voice is set, the me can be given a personality. Answering a quick survey will give the me its personality and will determine just how well he or she gets along with the other residents. It really does give the player an amazing amount of control. You can fill your island with your friends and family, celebrities, historical figures, Figures, or in my case, video game characters. You can even mix and match if you want, it's completely up to you. You don't have to make all of these Miis yourself though. Simply scan a QR code containing the Mii and it will pop into your game. However, this may limit what you can change about their appearance and name. It's why I have a Japanese Mario. Once you've created your Mii, it moves into the island's apartment complex. It starts off small, but as you add more Mii's to your island, it will grow bigger to accommodate. At this point, you're free to do whatever you want, though the main goal is to see your island grow and add new features. Each location has a specific prerequisite for how it opens, but simply interacting with the Mii's will eventually open them up. There's a grocery store with a daily rotating menu, though anything you buy once can be bought again on another day. The same idea applies to clothing and even apartment themes. Every Mii has their own tastes, and buying these items could increase the Mii's happiness. The more they like it, the more their happiness will rise and the more money they'll give you. You can then use this money to buy even more items. Of course, you can also earn money by getting donations from Mii's at the fountain or by selling the gifts that they give you at the pawn shop. Money never really becomes a problem as there's always something you can do with the Mii's. They'll either want to meet a fellow Mii and hope a new friendship is forged, want to play a game where you can earn new items, or have problems that you can solve. Each one will reward you with happiness for the Mii, money, or new items. While Animal Crossing focuses on you, Tamodachi life is all about the Mii's. As they live on the island together, they'll develop relationships. Some will become friends and couples can even be made. The Mii's will even have bad days where they'll fight amongst themselves. But one of the key features that Nintendo has advertised is that Mii's can become romantically involved and even have babies. Unfortunately, I was unable to experience that feature before review. That being said, even experiencing the Mii's daily lives without romance is surprisingly fun. You never quite know what their reactions will be and sometimes it just gets so weird that you can't help but laugh. The feature that I found myself constantly revisiting though was the concert hall. One of the items you can give the Mii's when they reach a new happiness level is a song. It can be in one of eight genres and all come with their own lyrics. It was incredibly amusing to take these genres and write in the lyrics to existing songs. In that way, it becomes like the Vocaloid games and while not all of them work, they never stop being entertaining for me. Groups can even be formed to really spice up the performances. And that's really the key to enjoying Tamodachi life. It's all about experimentation to see what each of them like and don't like. You can be as weird or as normal as you feel, but the game has an innate sense of the weird. This is a game where you can spy on the dreams of your residents and then pull items from those dreams. This is a game where you can dress Mii's in whatever crazy outfit you want. And it's all done according to your schedule. There's no need to return to the game every day. 
the Miis won't berate you for not visiting. It truly makes the game perfect for just winding down and playing at my own pace, even if I don't do it for weeks at a time. Players can even use Street Pass to visit each other's islands or trade goods. Spot Pass will eventually give out special items as well. Unfortunately, I was also unable to check out either of these features. But the core game is so charming on its own that I feel that Street Pass is simply a way to get more out of it. The presentation fits the game perfectly. This isn't a graphical powerhouse or anything, but it does provide a sense that the Miis are living here. And keeping the graphics simple works well with the style of the Miis, though the few times realistic pictures and models appear, they are used to humorous effect. The same could be said of the music. They're simple, but they fit the world. It keeps things at a relaxed pace at all times, and each of the eight genres at the concert hall is stuck in my head, especially the pop song and the ballad. Tamodachi Life is a great addition to the life sim genre. While you could attach some of its ideas to The Sims or Animal Crossing, it really does feel like its own thing. Considering how little I typically care about these types of games, I'm surprised how much I really enjoyed it. In fact, I liked it a lot. And if you're a fan of the genre or even just curious, it's well worth trying out. Thanks for watching and be sure to stay tuned to Game Explain for more on Tamodachi Life and other things gaming.